Welcome back, students. So for the Leaving Cert Applied uh, program, the mathematical applications uh, specification is outlined here. So apart from key learning, key, key assign, your key assignments, the only syllabus that can be inspected or uh, assessed in your exam is in the concepts and skills, maths concepts and skills. So here it is. Let's take a look. So the following learning outcomes underpin the contextual learning outlearn, outlined in the modules and form the basis for all planning for teaching and learning. So basically this is what, this is what comes up in the test. It supports um, contextual learning is the different themes that you went through um, when we went through the book and when we did our key assignments. There's one outstanding but we, 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 we'll get that, we'll pick that up um, some day or for one after during one or two days between now and June. So um, in terms of problem solving, this is very generic. Uh, make sense of a given problem and represent it using mathematics. Um, so that comes up in all the syllabus. Uh, we will be doing problem solving, um, but um, it just means you're able to read a question and figure out what maths to do essentially. Apply your knowledge and skills to solve a problem, including decomposing it into manageable parts and are simplifying, simplifying using appropriate assumptions. So this is just general kind of um, rhetoric, general kind of wording for all maths problems. And as such, it doesn't translate to a specific problem in the exam. And neither will the following. Interpret and justify your solutions in terms of the original problem. So this is just stuff you do when you're, when you're, when you're working out a problem. OK, now moving on to the second part of the concepts and skills uh, uh, list. Perform calculation on positive and negative numbers, including addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, square roots, and, po and positive whole numbers. Um, okay, so basically doing simple calculations, including square roots. Use the order of arithmetic, including the use of brackets. Now, oftentimes we can do them in the exam by simply keying in the exact expression into the calculator. Um, present answers to the degree of accuracy required. So this is about rounding, for example, to the nearest whole number, nearest thousand, etc. Use appropriate units and convert between them, including but not exclusively millimeters, centimeters, blah, 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 blah. OK, now this is often done for us. We've been noticing in questions. They often say give your answer in centimeters, in which case they're letting you off the hook and you can give a numerical answer. But there are places where they don't say that. And so it's a good habit if the answer is 15 centimeters to write 15 space cm. Flexibly convert between fractions, decimals and percentages. Um, so these these are you can see themes and classes coming up here. Um, there's going to be a class on these calculations, um, maybe two or three classes. There's going to be a worksheet or a booklet for you to do an assignment that you'll be given several days to do. Um, there'll be some teaching involved here where I kind of wave my hands in the air and tell you how beautiful it is the way we can remember fractions like one sixth being point one six 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 etc. Use and understand ratio and proportion. So when things are proportional, maths gets very, very simple. And most of your course is involved in, in involves maths situations that are proportional. If three euro converts to this many dollars, then so how much will a holiday for this amount of euro cost in dollars, etc. So these are all proportional questions. There's many of them. On we go to 2D and 3D shapes. OK, so um, now which ones in particular uh, we're going to draw and interpret scale di diagrams using appropriate geometrical tools. So we've been talking about this already. Um, we've been talking about our, um, our, our, you know, our, what are they called, our geometry sets. So it'll be very important we all have one. Um, hopefully I'm going to source them for you. Um, go through what I have at home in boxes and that and just make sure everyone has. So just one quick thing to say about that is this should not be something locked away in a box. This should just you should have to be in your pencil case out on the desk ready to work every day. OK, it, I don't particularly I'm not a fan of those metal boxes because they generally just takes too long to take them out. And, and it's these 
tools are part and parcel of your strategy it's like your pen your calculator they should be there at the ready to go draw and interpret nets including so we will have we we'll have loads of technology to help us. We we'll see about going to the root, to the technology room, to one of the computer rooms. If not, some days I'll say to you now, use your laptops and we'll do some exploring here. Okay, um, find a perimeter and area of 2D shapes. So discs, that's a circle essentially, triangles, base by perpendicular heights, your calculation, um, and rectangles. So you'll have your side plus side length plus length plus breadth plus breadth for your your uh, perimeter and you'll have length by breadth for your area now what 3d shapes do we need to be worried about obviously rectangular solids which is like a box and cylinders so there it is it's there in two two or two fra two phrases um cylinders and rectangular boxes okay very very simple rectangular solids Recognize and use the important facts regarding angles at a point, that's 360 degrees, on a straight line, that's 180 degrees, in a square, so 360 degrees all the way around a square, 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90, rectangles, parallelograms, opposite angles and parallelograms are equal, um, and two angles beside each other add to 180, and then triangles, where the three angles add up to 180. Okay, I'm giving you a whistle stop tour, but it's just summarizing what we need to be able to do. It's very simple, and if we find anything that's not on this in any exam paper, we're going to be going scratching our heads wondering what on earth just happened. But it's not going to happen because exam papers stay within within spec. And then we've got Pythagoras, brilliant. We're going to know Pythagoras inside out, and it doesn't say in its simplest way. So sometimes you're going to be calculating the leg of a right angle triangle using a minus sign instead of a plus sign. Okay, we're going to keep going. I'm six, seven minutes in, and we're and we're going further. So we're going because I want this to cover the entire syllabus. Evaluate expressions given the value of the variables. So can we um, fill in values when we get an expression? So two x squared plus three x plus five, and then x equals two. What's the what's the value? And you fill them in, and it's very easy. Represent linear relationships in tables graphs or tables is when you've I'll show you them we'll have loads of them in GeoGebra and so on and we, we'll get used to making up tables graphs and generalized expressions in other words um, an expression just using words okay so we gotta be able to go from word expressions to graphs to tables um, but only in the case of linear relationships so in, in fact that means there won't be x squared, there won't be quadratic, and there won't be 2 to the x. It's very, very simple. Um, a number in front of x plus a number. It's as simple as that. Select and use suitable strategies for solving, I'm sure, equations. So including for finding solutions to problems involving linear relationships. So we're going to spend a few days doing them. It's a very, very easy, nice topic. Um, Okay, and you'll be all able to solve linear equations by the time by the time we're ready, we're ready in June. Okay, so it's very exciting the classes we can have and the themes we can have. We're not just going to do exam papers without focusing on these individual themes. Okay, carrying on, carry out a statistical investigation so that you can generate a statistical question. What color car is most popular in Toma Community College and uh, amongst the teachers? What year car? These are statistical questions that can be answered through statistics, through, through capturing data and analyzing it, looking for the modal color or the modal year, etc. The plan and a method to generate and our source. What is unbiased data and what is representative data? And let's be sure we don't mix them up. Okay, so representative, first of all, a representative sample. Representative data is a data that comes from a representative sample. What's a representative sample? It's a miniature version of the entire population. So if we're talking about all the students in Toma Community College, then a representative date data will come from all first year, second years, third years, fourth years, etc. It will come from male and female students. It will come from other different categories of student being represented appropriately according to the general distribution in the population. What's unbiased data? It's making sure you select a random sample where there isn't a better chance for one type of category of, of student or whatever, of, of, of individual being picked over another. 
So you don't, for instance, pick the three or four winners of a race and ask them their sporting habits and then pretend that that should represent and that that that's that's a way to to measure the general sporting activity of the students. Okay, so to be unbiased is to um, make sure e each student in the population has an equal uh, an equal likelihood of being selected for your for your data capture. So there's always sampling. You're not going to, you're, you know, in large, large populations, sampling is done. And for the sampling to be unbiased means you're not um, foolishly, you know, picking a selection method that naturally biases. Select, draw, and interpret appropriate graphical displays, including bar charts, pie charts, trend graphs, and histograms and knowing in particular the difference between histograms and pie charts. What type of data goes into a histogram? Continuous data. What kind of data goes into a bar chart? Normally categorical data, but if it isn't categorical, like what age students are, still the bars are split up with space between them and there's discrete values. Select, calculate and interpret appropriate summary statistics. So do you use the mean, the median or the mode? Here we have them here. Uh, do we use the range um, and so on? The range will be the only measurement of spread, how spread out is the data. And these are different ways of measuring the middle. And I say to you, there's only one way to talk about the middle of a circle, but there are three ways to talk about the middle of a triangle. So it's not surprising that there's more than one way to talk about the middle of the data, depending on what we want to focus on. Evaluate the effectiveness of different graphical displays in representing data. So, is a pie chart is a pie chart a good idea here, or maybe is um would it would a, would a bar chart be better? And I'll show you clear examples where one is better than the other. Okay, and we put it into words so we can express our mathematics of why one is better than the other. Discuss misconceptions and misuse of statistics. So false floors in particular, where the data seems to be very varied, but just because you're looking at the top profile, and again, this is very hard for you to visualize until we go through this with further videos. But that's it, that's your entire course. Okay, so that's all you have to study. And we have until June to do it. So it's good news all around. So students, I all sign off with, as always, I will see you in the next one.